In the past, we've dealt with all sorts of crocodilians here on Camp Kennan. We've handled big guys like the Nile crocodile, as well as the ever-present American alligator down here in Florida. But did you know there are only two living species of alligator in the world? The other species is the Chinese alligator, which is extremely endangered. It's believed that there are fewer than 130 left in the wild. Hey, what's going on? Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the Chinese alligator. We've met a lot of American alligators in our travels, but not a Chinese one. See you in a minute. There are two things I've loved most in this life, bikes and reptiles. Now I crisscross the globe learning about all kinds of incredible animals. Sometimes I know what I'm doing. Other times, I'm in over okay, my head. But one thing's for certain, we'll come away a whole lot smarter after every adventure. This is Camp Kennedy. All right, so I'm really excited because I've always loved Chinese alligators. And this particular guy was being kept in kind of not the optimal conditions. That's why the new owner has him at his facility, an undisclosed facility right here somewhere in Florida. And they're gonna fatten this animal up because it was more of a rescue. So this animal's gonna get himself fattened up and man, they can bounce back so amazingly. Um, of course, crocodilians are evolved to really take the harshest of conditions. Now the cool thing about the Chinese alligator is that the Chinese alligator only comes from a very small area in China right around the Yangtze River. Just a few tributaries there. And this is one of the top three most endangered crocodilians in the world. And it's neat to see an alligator that is not an American alligator. Being from Florida, you know I get excited when I see our American alligator. This is actually very different if you look at it, but it does still have the very broad snout. So you can look right there and you can see that snout is extremely broad. That's for crushing. These guys actually focus on a smaller prey, a lot of crustaceans, some fish, some turtles, things that they really need to crush. Uh, again, these are not gonna be very large animals. I think the biggest these guys get is about five foot, and that would be a monster Chinese alligator. So these guys are also thought to be the animal that really inspired the Chinese to draw the dragons. They're a very important part of their culture, uh, and that's why the Chinese government is actually stepped in and they're really trying to help these animals out because as you can imagine with the expanse you know, of the middle class in China, uh, habitat loss, just the population of human beings out there, it's incredible how much pressure is on this animal to survive. Another cool thing about the Chinese alligator, much like our American alligators, is these guys can hibernate. They take some pretty cold temperatures. So they make a really cool animal, if you're into crocodilians, to work with here in South Florida because they can take our winners. So I can't wait. We haven't given this guy a name. He's gonna get himself a little fattened up and I'm sure there's gonna be a few gals for this guy to mate with. So it's gonna be really exciting to see how this animal turns out. Sick that I'm holding a Chinese alligator. It's been a dream of mine. I just love their faces, man. So incredible. Again, just like any crocodilian, these guys are designed for that aquatic lifestyle. And if you focus right here, this is their ear. It's a nice flap that it can seal up. They have really good hearing, actually. And then we'll bring it right over to the eyeballs. I wanna be careful in case he decides to take a chomp out of me. But when he closes that eye, you'll see that nictitating membrane just like that. I'm sorry to poke you, buddy. But they have that third eyelid. And then finally, way up top on their nostrils, they can make that airtight as well, just like any other crocodilian. Now these guys also dig burrows, man. They'll be found up underneath the riverbanks when it gets cold. And that's how they survive some of the winters down there near the Yangtze River. So you're looking at a primitive creature and the inspiration for the Chinese dragon. Pretty cool, man. We'll get him back and get him fattened up. See you later, dude. So long, guys. <laughs>